Well, how many days are we after the show? It's uh, three days, no? I think. It is, is it three days. days. How do you feel? Relax now? The show is a success. Yeah, we feel yeah. good. You know, we're busy as, as busy can be because we do the men's and the women's, so it's a good relief to kind of finish the spring season and start into fall. Yeah, we all know the opening ceremony stores. I've just talked about it on my blog. And what was that switch when you started working really on Kenzo? Well, you know, what's interesting is, so we've done the Chloe collection, but we've also had our own collection for now seven years. Mm -hmm. And so we've always designed. So a lot of people first discover us through the store. Some people discover us through the brand because, you know, we sell opening ceremony and 400 stores around the world. And, and so it was a natural progression, I think, for when we started here, you know, to work on the collection, but also to work on the whole brand as, as a unit. I also think that this is such an exciting story to tell. In 1969, it was really, you know, Issa Laurent and Karl Lagerfeld that really dominated the Parisian scene. So for this Japanese guy to come to Paris and create this phenomenon that was bringing street culture meets, you know, high fashion and everything kind of mixed up, in many ways, he was kind of the rebel house. And it, we're really trying to use our experience here to tell the entire scope of, of what this house means in Paris. Did you meet with Kenzo? We have actually. Uh, uh, we met him once and you know one of the things, one of the first things that we did when we came to the house is we wrote him a letter saying that we were really excited and honored to be a part of this house and to really continue his legacy. And he wrote us a very nice note saying, um, Is that know, after our first presentation? And he said, you know, I really feel like you're bringing the energy the energy that I remembered back to the brand. I remember reading about him because I, I really loved his work yeah. and you know, I love the house. I think it's one of the first brands that I bought. Yeah. And it was the, in the middle of the art scene, you had a house where everybody would yeah. go and they had big dinners and share about, you know, musicians and yeah. painters and everything. You have a community around you too. There is really that energy and it, it feels like you bring people with you in your adventure. And so there is something very similar with that. How did it start? How did it, I mean, you know, we were talking about Chloe Sevigny, Spike Jones. I just saw your little movie that is adorable. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did that come? Have you always worked that way? We work like a family. We're very much, we involve everyone. And we came into this building with 250 people working here. And the first day we came and we gathered everyone and we said, hey, look, you guys worked in a whole different way before, and we only know one way to work. So we're gonna break down the walls, and now, and it's amazing, we physically broke down all the walls. You did? And now everyone works together, and it's the first time in the house's history where men's and women's design teams sit together, the print team sit together, and I think everyone feels so involved. We invite the entire company to see the shows. They're part of the creation, and we've really made it a point to include everyone. funny because that first show that we did, which was here, our friends all came out and they said, what can I do to help? Oh, that's and we awesome. said, <laughs> and so, you know, Jason Schwartzman came and he said, what should I do? And I said, oh my God, do the music for the show. And Spike was like, let me document this. So he's been documenting us since we've been here. Chloe said, you know, we said, you're coming. And we said, you're gonna end the show. She said, no. <laughs> she said, I do not want to walk a fashion show. We said, you have to. And so, she, you know, she did it. So I think we've always kind of worked in this way where our friends just really want to be involved and they're excited to be a part of this. And, you know, I think our atelier and our design team, it's all people we've known for years. And I think it's exciting to work in that way. Oh, it feels like we all want, I want to come over. <laughs> we come over too. Yeah. How is it to work in France? We love it. <laughs> it's really it's so different, yeah, no? it's Because amazing. I live in America now. I'm like, oh my God, American, they work so much. And <laughs> <laughs> you know what we love? We love that everyone from 1 to 2 p.m. goes out for lunch. Right! It's so amazing. we're like, we're going to go out for lunch too. So then we, for that hour, it's so civilized. We're like, oh, 1 o'clock, everyone's gone. There is nobody. Yeah, nobody. <laughs> Normally at, in New York, we eat at our desk. Uh, well, we're hello. working. I know. I'm, I'm doing that now. And I was like, in the beginning, I was like, guys, I'm going to make my 20 minutes nap and everybody was like <laughs> what <laughs> you created a hit 
this season with your Kenzo uh, sweater. How do you feel about that when you see it everywhere on the street? It's funny because it started when we did the women's collection and we did that for the women's last runway show and I said, I want it. I said, <laughs> I, I want one of those. So I forced the team to make one for me uh -huh. and that's how the men's ones came about. People come to the shows to see the clothes but also because there is something, everybody's happy to go and everybody's curious and you establish that in three seasons. Um, how, how did it come? How do you work on it and how important is it for you? Well, you know what's interesting is that Carol and I have always said, you know, when we, when we were at our opening ceremony, we said, we never want to do a fashion show. <laughs> and so we said, we don't have to, we don't want to, we never want to. We go to all these shows mm. so we know the standard and we think, oh, like, so much work. Yeah. So yeah. I think when we came to Kenzo, we realized, obviously, we have to do a fashion show. We know that people have to go to hundreds of shows in a season. We said, we have to make it fun. We have to make it something where there is a reason to come. We like to consider, you know, is there something special that they get at their seat? And you know, at our men's show, we do a partnership with Starbucks. This year it was the cookies from Momofuku? From yeah. Momofuku, which was, was really like, exciting. This is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. And I actually carried the bag during the day. You did? That's my bag, to oh. put my glasses and my phone. Oh, and that's so perfect. So that was really smart. And what about the projection? Did you work on that? Who worked on those? We did. We actually, it's funny because Kara and I, um, we saw this, this clip on YouTube of Beyonce performing at the Billboard Music Awards. And there was amazing video projections. And so we said, who did those videos? And when we looked it up, it said Kenzo Digital. That's crazy. When Kara and I <laughs> <laughs> looked into doing The Jungle, as an inspiration. We wanted to bring it to 2012. And really, we feel like, you know, we're living in this amazing digital jungle. And, you know, obviously you're a huge part of it. We said, okay, we have to contact this guy. Yeah. And this was only two and a half weeks ago. Oh, God. Carol and I were in New York. Oh, God. Right after Fashion we were Week. At our desk and he's like, send him an email. And I was like, all I could find is like a generic info at yeah. Kenzo. I was like, okay, so then we're like, dear Kenzo, you know, we're really big fans of your work. We do opening ceremony. Within 30 seconds, oh, yeah. we get an email back saying, yeah. "We're huge. I'm huge fans of Opening Ceremony. I'm huge fans of Kenzo. What you're doing there? Yeah. Let's meet." He lives in New York. He lives, he lives in, in New York. <laughs> He's in and he was like, uh, "He just found out a few months ago that he was named after Kenzo." So we thought it's destiny. We have to work with this guy, and he said, "I have to do this." You know that video projection was really complex. Oh, the thank you. And, I mean, yeah. and we love, you know, I think one of the things that we've always wanted to do is also connect the show and the models to the people watching. And mm -hmm. we love yeah. ending. Yeah, the ending. You see the point of view of what we're trying to show, and then we invite people to come and interact with them up close. The brand is so it's democratic, it's welcoming. That's how Kenzo Takata was, and I think that we always look to him as a person, as you know, an inspiration point. And, and it's so, how we are. Yeah, I think we're, how... we like to be very inclusive. Yeah, we yeah. want just everyone to really come and enjoy the show and have a good time. Perfect. <laughs>